What is happening, everybody? It is Thursday evening, and it's a time to you know break down everything we got to talk about here over on Owner's Box. If you guys are not familiar with Owner's Box, we've come to the right place because we're going to walk through all of it here. But it is a new DFS site, and they do have a totally different way to play main slates for NFL because they have super flex contests. So you can play lineups with two quarterbacks, which we'll be doing on here in a little bit for the Sunday main slate, but then also breaking down Thursday night football. And the only thing I'm going to ask of you guys as you're watching is to like the video, subscribe to the YouTube channel. If you haven't checked out Owner's Box, sign up using the link that we have below. You are going to get up to a $500 bonus on your first deposit. So good way to help build your bankroll over there. And then any questions you guys have at all about Thursday night football, Sunday main slate, or, or really anything at all, throw it into the YouTube chat and we could answer that as we go. But where I want to start here, unless you guys want to hear me talk about something else, is let's start by talking about Thursday Night Football because that is going to be kicking off here in a couple of hours. And we do have Owner's Box supported in the Sims tool here over at stochastic.com. So what we're going to do here is build some lineups for the Thursday Night Football game on Owner's Box. And we'll see which players we get to the most exposure of. So build out 10,000 lineups here, generate them. Also, if you guys are either new to our Sims tool or maybe you're a user of it who haven't seen the latest updates, we do have something pretty cool in here now, which is the contest archetype setting. So what this allows you to do is build pools of lineups based on the different tournaments that you're playing in. So if you guys are familiar with the different ownership that we see at the different levels of DFS, you know, pretty frequently, the players who are expected to produce the best on a points per dollar basis, the highest projected players. They're much more popular in the higher stakes contest than the lower stakes contest. And we do have sliders now that will take that into account when you're building lineups out. So let's see. Owner's box tonight. What is the payout structure for the main GPP over on owner's box? Let's go we'll put it. 25% to first here. Now we'll run the uh, contest simulation and see what it is that ends up popping up here over on owner's box. So what we're doing right here is all those lineups that are just built out in the contest generator, they're not playing against each other uh, 40,000 times to identify which ones are the best. And that is how quickly it ran there. I'm going to favorite the top 50 of them here. And then we'll see what the different exposures look like, as well as some of the best rated multiplier plays. Now, something of note here, highest projected lineup. So you guys are watching this and wondering, hey, what is what is just the number one best lineup projected in here for owner's box? It is actually Zay Flowers in the multiplier spot with Tyler Boyd, Gus Edwards, Trenton Irwin, and then Jamar Chase. So actually no quarterbacks in my top projected lineup. That's going to be a function of what the expected ownership is. But this lineup does have a 112.3 simulated ROI. And also something else that's going to take into account is the lack of dupes. So this is a lineup leaves a bunch of salary on the table. It's got some contrarian players. It doesn't have either of their quarterbacks. And that is something that's really making it unique because if you look at some of these other lineups, expect to be duped really heavily. So this lineup here, for instance, is expected to be the most popular lineup on owner's box tonight. It is Jamar Chase in the multiplier spot with Tyler Boyd, Zay Flowers, Joe Mixon, and Trent Irwin. So not to say there's anything wrong with that lineup as just an individual lineup, but it doesn't project out very well by the simulated ROI when we simulate the contest out because of how often it's being duped. So some of these other ones, even though they're due pretty heavily, they project well enough to where on a site like Owner's Box, where the tournaments aren't massive and it doesn't have a really top-heavy payout structure like a DraftKings, where it's you know a million dollars to first, maybe in a $3 million prize pool, payout structure a little bit flatter, but then also with it being smaller prize pools, some of these lineups that are expected to be duped more still end up being more plus EV. But number one lineup most duped didn't make it into my top lineups. Neither the second most projected duped lineup, which is similar to the other one, Jamar Chase, Tyler Boyd, Gus Edwards, Joe Burrow, and Trent Irwin. So the difference between these two lineups is uh, this one is Joe Burrow. This one had Joe Mixon. But either way, both of them expect to be duped a bunch of times, and they also use the majority of the salary. Let's go ahead and look at some of the exposures. Don't forget, guys, if you're watching, if you have any questions for me, throw it into YouTube chat. I can answer any questions you might have. But looking at the players I'm getting the most exposure to, starting with just the flex spot here, we're getting to the most of Trenton Irwin. He's actually in 60% of my lineups. He remains very, very cheap over on owner's box and really opens up a bunch of salary savings. So that also is the case for if you guys are playing on DraftKings, if you're playing on FanDuel, uh, 
Trent Irwin projects as one of the top value plays on the slate. So uh, Irwin showing up in 60% of my lineups here and also pulling up some of the owner's box contests for today. And it is a uh, 25K pri- uh, prize pool, 5K to first place. So uh, 20% to first. I said it to 25%, should have said it to 20, but it's not going to massively alter the results. It does have some impact, but still the guys I like here are the guys that are uh, going to be liking to. We've got a uh, Yocastic, Mike Lawrence in the chat saying, rest in peace, Steve Irwin. Yeah, Trent Irwin playing for Steve today. Those are the, those are the rumors. Taking on the Stingrays. Now, Trent and Irwin, what, what is the relationship between Trent and Irwin and Steve Irwin? If I'm not mistaken, they're brothers, right, Mike? Pretty sure they're brothers. People don't know that about Trent and Irwin, but he's actually transitioning to an NFL player from being uh, an animal preservationist. Other players that we have, yeah, all right, confirmed by Mike in the chat. Correct, they are brothers. Uh, Tyler Boyd, another player we're getting a whole bunch of. So two top players. Players making into the most of my lineups, Tyler Boyd, Trent, and Irwin, two pass catchers for the Bengals, which kind of makes me a little bit surprised that we only have 28% of Joe Burrow. But what is his price point here? Pull it up on my other computer. Yeah, so Joe Burrow, very expensive. He is 6,800, so the third overall most expensive player on the slate. The only players more expensive than Joe Burrow, which I'm sure you could probably guess, are Jamar Chase and Lamar Jackson. But... I'm also not getting to a ton of Jamar Chase nor Lamar Jackson. So these are line, well, actually a good amount of Lamar Jackson in that multiplier spot, 36%, but it's not like a crazy amount. When I was building lineups for comparison's sake for DraftKings earlier, I was getting to north of 80% of Lamar Jackson and still getting to 70% of Joe Burrow because the pricing is a little bit tighter here on owner's box. I have Lamar Jackson in... Uh, let's see, what is that? 60% of lineups, you know, still a good amount, but not as much as I'm playing on other sites today. And then Joe Burrow in, let's see, 28, so 48%. So relative to what you're going to be looking on DraftKings and FanDuel, the quarterbacks do, uh, do get a little bit harder to play here on owner's box. Zay Flowers is the Ravens player I'm getting the most exposure to in the flex spot here, 42% of him, and then Mark Andrews also 34%. So when I'm playing Lamar Jackson here on owner's box, the players that are getting stacked with the most predominantly are going to be Zay Flowers and Mark Andrews. And then if we go ahead and look at some of the running backs in this game, let's see, Gus Edwards showing up the most in 24% of, oh no, I'm just mixing here, mixing in 28% of lineups. Gus Edwards in 24%, Keaton Mitchell also in 24%. Now, if you're wondering, though, you can only play one or the other. You got the salary for both. Do you want to play Gus Edwards or Keaton Mitchell tonight? My answer for you is going to be Gus Edwards. We have Edwards project for 8.96 fantasy points, Keaton Mitchell for 6.25. And then also something to keep in mind is that Keaton Mitchell's really gotten hyped up a lot over the course of the week. He seems like somebody that the public is really getting behind. A lot of people are talking about. So not only do we have Gus Edwards projected slightly better than Keaton Mitchell, I wouldn't be surprised if Keaton Mitchell ends up becoming more popular everywhere just because he's kind of a hot name at the moment. Other players here that we're getting to for cheap. Let's see. Irv Smith Jr., he's in 10% of lineups. Tanner Hudson, 10%. Nothing real significant there. These are just punt plays, each projected for about three fantasy points. If you're looking to save salary today and, and go you know, well off the board, Irv Smith Jr., Tanner Hudson, two guys who could make some sense but nothing else that's really making it into too much of my top owner's box lineups for tonight. Yeah, Keaton Mitchell, 24%. Just make sure there's nothing I missed. Rashad Bateman, 26%. I assume that's going to have me underweight to the field on Bateman for tonight. Yeah, nothing else here that I really want to go over other than maybe some of the captain exposures here. So if we go ahead and look at the captains, getting to really only the three studs, Lamar Jackson, Jamar Chase, Joe Burrow, they're making, uh, let's see, do some quick math, Quick math. 78% of my lineups have one of these three guys in the multiplier spot. If you're going a little bit cheaper, Tyler Boyd's the one who stood out the most, then Zay Flowers, Joe Mixon, Mark Andrews. But still, keep in mind that this is over the course of, of I, I simulated out 10,000 lineups, then I favored in my top 50. So if you're somebody who only is playing one, two, three, 10 lineups, I wouldn't deviate from the Jackson, Chase, Burrow, Trio. I think those are the guys you really want to be playing in your multiplier spots tonight. If there are no other questions about Showdown, which I don't really see any of them coming into the YouTube chat, let's go ahead 
and build some lineups for the main slate and see what's popping up there. And also, if you guys have questions about NBA, I know it's only a two-game NBA slate, but we could hit on that as well. All right, owner's box. We'll go do the main slate now. Build out 10,000 lineups. I'm just going to leave this as the standard stack exposure. So we have this defaulted to build out lineups, by the way, in case anybody's ever curious. It is a 45% QB plus a single stack, 25% QB double stack, 5% QB with a triple stack, and then 25% of lineups having a run back. So that's the default settings here. If you guys ever wanted to change that and make it so that you're stacking, you know, more QB plus one or anything like that, you could change that as well. And then what this is going to do is we're building out lineups that are supposed to be close to emulating what the field is doing. And then all those lineups are going to play against each other in a second. And we'll figure out which of those lineups project to play out the best in a large field tournament setting. All right. Lineups being built. It will take a little bit longer to build lineups for the main slate as compared to the showdown because there's a lot more players involved, but still no more than like 60 or 90 seconds. But while we're doing this, I'll look for some bets for it today. Do you guys have any bets you like for today or any bets that you would like to ask me about? Uh, we've got uh, TE in the chat. Why not change the 5% QB stack to 0% in this scenario? Why not change the 5% QB stack? Because I want to have some lineups that are triple stacked. That's the reason why. I still want to be getting to some of them. And another thing too is it is a stack type that in the long term is very profitable, triple stacks. So the evidence for that is just kind of pulling numbers off the top of my head. But I think the actual number is it's only like 1% of the field in large field tournaments. And here we're talking about bigger sample sizes like DraftKings, the Millie Maker. Only 1% of the field is playing triple stack lineups, but still it's something like 4% of lineups that are triple stacks end up being in the top 1% of lineups. So they're way overrepresented. So it's a very high upside stack, but also a very low floor as well. But that's why even though I only have 5% of my lineups built out to be triple stacks, I feel pretty comfortable saying that some of those 5% are going to make it in my top 150 lineups because of how often those lineups do end up projecting well when we simulate out the slate. All right, so we've got the lineups built out. One thing I'm noticing here is that we are expecting a ton of ownership going to the Houston Texans this weekend. We've got 47% projected ownership to Dalton Schultz on owner's box, 39.4% ownership expected to go to Devin Singletary, and my computer crashed on me. Well, that's cool. All right, let's go back to the main page. Might have to... All right. Close out my browser, open it back up. Start from scratch. That was anticlimactic, was it not? All right, pull up a new tab. Here we go. Going back to stochastic.com. Hopefully, I didn't get logged out. All right, still logged in at least. And let's let's go ahead and build lineups again. I'll still look for bets, by the way. Mike blaming Jimmy Butler. Yeah, I, I'm going to blame Jimmy Butler probably hacked my computer. I'm going to assume that's what happened. And there we go. I clicked on the wrong thing. I meant to click on the Sims and actually clicked on the lineup generator. Here we go. We're back on track now, fellas. Didn't lose too many viewers from that. All right. Let's build. Oh, actually, I could just restore the last pool. Never mind. That's for, here we go, main state. Let's see, do we have one for this? Yeah, here we go. All right. We're back on track. So if, you're, if you ever want to restore the last pool that you guys make in the contest generator, you could just always click restore and the last one you built will pop up. But let's see. Owner's box, the main slate on Sunday. What is the percentage payout to first? Percentage payout to first is 20%. It is a $100,000 prize pool, 20K to first. So we'll go 20% when we simulate this out. And also that does allow us to play up to 150 lineups. So I'll, I'll select top 150 on this afterwards. And let's look for some bets for today. What is standing out on Odd Shopper for tonight? All right. Top NFL bets. I'll sort by NFL over here. Do you guys have any bets that you like? Anything you want me to look up? You can throw it in chat and I can tell you what our projections are on it. But for now, our actual number one projected ROI bet for tonight's game 
Irv Smith Jr. for over 10 and a half receiving yards. Super low number. And I know that Irv Smith's been a disappointment, particularly if you guys played best ball or if you're playing yearly leagues and you drafted Irv Smith. You probably don't like this guy very much. But keep in mind, there is no T. Higgins in the lineup. And that does open up a lot of opportunity for additional targets and other players for Joe Burrow to be throwing the football in the absence of T. Higgins. So we go ahead and look at Irv Smith Jr. He did draw a target last week. And we've seen like a little bit of an uptick in targets for him overall. If you look at the last three games, sure, only one target last week, but the games before that, four targets, four targets. So he does have in his last three games, four catches for 25 yards, four catches for 26 yards. Stinker last week with one catch for six yards. But I mean, when you consider T. Higgins is out and that he has had more volume in some of these recent games, I think our projection, Irv Smith Jr., over 10 and a half receptions, or sorry, over 10 and a half receiving yards certainly makes sense. Over 10 and a half receptions, that would would be a little bit much for one game. That's like what he's got for the entire year. 10 and a half receiving yards tonight. I like it. I could certainly get behind that. All right. Got everything working here. Put it back on screen. Here we go. Bam. All right. Got Sims run for the owner's box. Main slate on Sunday. And here we go. We got everything, uh, everything looking good again. So if we favorite the top 150 lineups, let's see what kind of exposures we get to. Number one overall projected lineup for owner's box here on the Sunday main slate. It is actually two double stacks here. Brock Purdy, Geno Smith. So Purdy with Christian McCaffrey and where's the, oh, Brandon Ayuk. And then Geno Smith with Tyler Lockett and Jackson Smith and Jigba. JSN's look pretty good as of late. The problem always with him is going to be like very, very boom or bust. Which I don't mind for tournaments. For cash games, it's a problem. But for tournament purposes, big play upside in Jackson Smith and Jigba. Really do like pairing him with Geno Smith in some lineups. And then, uh, you know, you got the Brock Purdy, Christian McCaffrey, Brandon IU combination. I know that oftentimes we won't necessarily love the idea of pairing a quarterback with their own running back. But Christian McCaffrey, I think we could view entirely different. He's very involved in the passing game. And we know that he scores touchdowns just about every game, although last week notwithstanding. So uh, Christian McCaffrey, very live to get a receiving touchdown from Brock Purdy in this game. Let's go ahead and look at some of the exposures now for individual players. We'll look at ownership and uh, a little bit of everything to cover on the slate. Let's look at some of the stack exposures as well. So you see, we still do have some triple stacks that popped up here. And kind of getting to the question that uh, TE, I, I don't know if that's your initials or maybe just short for tight end, but what we're getting to here is even though I only have 5% of my lineup set to be triple stacks, of my top 150 lineups that came out in the Sims, still look, it's you know about 30, what, 33% or so, about a third of my top lineups ended up simming out as being triple stacks, even though only 5% of my entire just uh, overall pool of lineups were triple stacks because of how often these project better than anything else. So predominantly my lineups here did end up being double and triple stacks. Some single stacks popped up as well. Quarterback that we stacked the most in, this is kind of interesting. So I think this probably is going to mostly have to do with the price point of the Miami Dolphins. We have the Dolphins projected really, really well this weekend. I'm not getting to very many single stacks here, right? Not all that many. But the ones I am getting to are almost all Tua. So we haven't looked at the other exposures yet, but I'm going to guess that we have a lot of Tua to Tyree Kill stacks, and they are just so expensive that we're not able to fit like a Jalen Waddle into those lineups as well because it would just be an impossible lineup combination to get to and fill out a service will line up the rest of the way. So I'm getting to a ton of Tua here, but it's all single stacks, no double stacks for him or triple stacks. Whereas we're looking at the double and triple stacks, getting to a lot of Kyler Murray, in both of these categories, getting to a lot of Brock Purdy as double stacks, getting to a lot of C.J. Stroud. And I mean, some of these C.J. Stroud games have been uh, insane as of late, especially the one two weeks ago where a little bit influenced because the Texans kicker got hurt. So they basically had to go for it on almost every single fourth down. So the end result was, you know, C.J. Stroud throws for an NFL record over 400 yards passing for a rookie. And we saw just all this pass catching targets at massive, massive yards. But, uh, but uh, CJ Stroud has definitely looked like somebody who makes sense to make double and triple stacks with. Let's go position by position now. Starting with the QB. We'll see what we're getting to. So keep in mind also that 
owner's box is super flex. We're playing two quarterbacks, which is why people might look at it and be like, hey, how come you're getting to multiple quarterbacks or I should say more than 100% of quarterbacks? That's the reason why, because it's super flex. So we still have Tua as the most rostered quarterback here. Lots of Tua exposure, followed by CJ Stroud, Kyler Murray, Brock Purdy, Geno Smith, Trevor Lawrence. So these are the quarterback and uh, Jared, did I say Jared Goff? Senior moment here. Jared Goff as well. So those are the quarterbacks that I have double-digit exposure to, and actually 14-plus percent of all of them. But with that said, not all of these guys are like me being well overweight to the field, right? Actually slightly underweight to Lawrence, Goff, and Brock Purdy. Way overweight to two of them. And if you guys look at like all the data we have on the site, we really, really project the Dolphins to do well this weekend. So we have them off the top of my head, the last run of projections. I think we have a 22% chance of the Miami Dolphins to be the highest scoring team for a fantasy purposes on the slate. So hence getting to a whole bunch of Tua here. And then I expect I'm going to have a lot of Tyree kill as well. When I look at some of the wide receivers, look at actually let's, I was going to say running back first, but let's take a wide receivers. Now that we have the quarterback fresh in our mind to see what some of the combinations are. So right here, Michael Wilson is popping up in a bunch of lineups. Makes sense, right? Cause we had all those Kyler Murray lineups and double and triple stacks of Kyler Murray. So we got Michael Wilson paired with him in those lineups. Wilson projected for 13% ownership. I've been 46% of my top lineups here. So really strong value option, in my opinion here. And Michael Wilson at a cheap price point. His salary on owner's box is, pulling it up on my other computer here. All right, what is he? Michael Wilson is almost min price. Oh, here it is. Yeah, he is 3700 So very close to min price for him over on owner's box. So really, really affordable, too. If you're going Michael Wilson, who are the other Arizona receivers we're getting to? Uh, Rondell Moore, although not nearly as much of Hollywood Brown or Rondell Moore as we're getting to Michael Wilson. But that's where we're getting. Uh, Hollywood Brown, Rondell Moore. And then I bet if we go to tight ends, which I'll do in a second, I, I, I'll guarantee that Trey McBride is one of the most rostered tight ends that popped up here. All right, back to exposures. So Michael Wilson on the low end, no surprise here. Tyree Kill as well as we're projecting the Dolphins this weekend. Tyree Kill is my preferred payup option at any position, any skill position. If you guys could pay up for any running back, wide receiver, I know Christian McCaffrey is also somebody people are going to want to pay up for. My personal preference, Tyree Kill. Favorite payup option on the slate is somebody to get to. On the cheaper end, another one standing out here, Noah Brown. So also correlating with those Houston Texans stacks that we have with C.J. Stroud. Noah Brown is popping up in a bunch of lineups and no other Houston receivers a bunch. I do expect we probably have some of Devin Singletary with CJ Stroud as well. Darnell Mooney, Amon Ross, St. Brown, but still pretty big drop off from the core guys here. Michael Wilson, Tyree Kill, pretty clearly projecting as the two top guys to get to. If we look at players that I'm underweight to here at wide receiver, DeAndre Hopkins, Garrett Wilson, Terry McLaurin, Khalil Shakur, Terrence Marshall, Jonathan Mingo, hardly getting to any of these guys, and they're all projected for like 5 to 8% ownership. So those are guys that Sims not liking quite as much for this slate. Overweight to at the position, and just basically the same order of the players I had the most exposure to, but Wilson, Tyree Kill, Noah Brown, Darnell Mooney, and then Brandon Ayuk here fitting in with those Brock Purdy stacks. So let's go and look at tight end next, because I'm curious to see how often McBride popped up, and a lot. 42.7%. I thought he's going to be my most roster tight end, but hey, it's I'll settle for second here. So Trey McBride, and once again, just correlating with the quarterbacks we're getting to, played a lot of CJ Stroud in this sim. He ended up showing up a whole bunch. So we got Dalton Schultz in the tight end as a tight end a lot. We've got Trey McBride showing up in a bunch of lineups. Evan Ingram, so I assume almost all my Trevor Lawrence stacks in here are including Evan Ingram, some of Cole Komet as well, and then Sam Laporta. Basically, though, we've got like four guys that most of our lineups are being built around. I guess we could throw Sam Laporte into that as well. But like a ton of Dalton Schultz, ton of Trey McBride, ton of Evan Ingram. Those are your top three tight end plays for week 11. Oh, let's see where we're underweight to. Then we'll look at running backs. Underweight to Dalton Kincaid, Jake Ferguson, and then Sam Laporta, even though he was our fifth most rostered tight end, he's projected for 16% ownership, and he's in 13% of our lineup. So underweight here to Sam Laporta. Somebody who more, more like a neutral play for this late. 
So let's check out the running backs, and that'll pretty much bring us to the end of the show. If you guys have any other questions for me, well, I shouldn't say any other because there's only been a, a couple of them here. We got you know Mike bringing up uh, Steve Irwin, and then we've also got TE in the chat bringing up some questions about stack lineups. But anything else you guys have questions about, uh, throw them into the chat before we end here because I only got a couple minutes left. But let's go ahead and look at these running backs and who we're getting the most exposure to. Most exposed running backs, a ton of Devin Singletary, a bunch of Christian McCaffrey too. So we actually were able to fit in both McCaffrey and Tyree Kill. If I remember correctly, we had 38% Tyree Kill, something around that area. So actually able to get to both of them on the high end. McCaffrey, Tyree Kill, two top payup options on the slate. My personal preference, if you guys are just building one lineup to reiterate what I said before, is going to be Tyree Kill. And we're spitting out a bunch of each of them. McCaffrey also expected to be more popular. He's projected for 27% ownership, whereas we had Tyree Kill projected in the teens in terms of ownership. James Conner. Like, this is a spot for Conner going forward as well, because when we go ahead and look at the backfield for Arizona, James Conner came back from injury last week, didn't have the biggest game in the world, but with the way that Arizona was moving the ball down the field with Kyler Murray back, it's definitely something where I think that James Conner is going to benefit from Kyler Murray. So if you saw earlier in the year, I mean, James Conner, the first few weeks of the year was one of the top running back plays that we had in the NFL. He was, I think, second or third in the NFL in rushing yards before getting hurt. And that was with Joshua Dobbs at quarterback. And I know that Dobbs has had an outstanding year, but he's not quite as talented as Kyler Murray. Uh, CVA said favorite captain tonight, favorite dart. Yes, yeah, so we built out we built out lineups for showdown at the top of the show and captains. There was only three that I was really getting to, and it shouldn't surprise you, but it was the three studs you would expect. Lamar Jackson was somebody who was showing up Joe Burrow, Jamar Chase. So I don't really like to deviate too much on this particular slate. As far as the captain goes, my favorite dart play for tonight is probably Irv Smith jr. Somebody who's not going to be all that popular. Didn't have the best game last week, but has seen a little bit of an uptick in targets as of late. So with T Higgins out, I think that Irv Smith Jr. makes sense as like a lower owned dart. Jason Root said, isn't Pierce back? Uh, so Pierce is uncertain if he's going to play. He is currently questionable. In our projections, I will clarify that we currently have Pierce out. So we'll see what ends up happening. He's not guaranteed to play. He's not guaranteed to sit. He's questionable. But right now we're projecting him to be out. This would change pretty dramatically. And to the question here is, is single is a uh, singletary kind of risky if Pierce plays? Yeah, I would hardly be playing any of Singletary if Pierce is in, but that's just not how our projections are lining up at the moment. So we have Singletary project for 16.6 fantasy points with the assumption that Pierce doesn't play. But we need an update on that, which we'll have, you know, closer to Sunday. Other running backs here, getting to some of Jameer Gibbs and Aaron Jones, exposure to them in the teens. Coming in well underway to field to Tony Pollard. Pollard expected to be chalk this weekend, project for 28.8% ownership. He has really struggled this year and only getting to him in 11% of lineup. So players I'm underweight to at running back, Tony Pollard, Travis Etienne, and Saquon Barkley. Ninja Choke, OG666, said A-Chan or Mostert or both. I feel like we need a little bit more information on how limited A-Chan is going to be, but my current lean is towards Raheem Mostert. Mostly because we saw Achan was not getting like a massive workhorse role before getting hurt. Then he gets dinged up, has the knee issue, goes on the injured list, is coming back now. And so my expectation is he's going to be limited, but that's just a gut feeling as of now. So we'll need a little bit more information, but I expect him to be on some sort of fairly strict snap count. This was a guy who was only getting like eight to 10 touches before getting hurt. So I'm going to say Mostert as of now. But if we find out Sunday morning or Saturday night, there's no restrictions on A-Chan. He's going to start for the Dolphins. That would make me change my mind. As of now, though, my answer is Raheem Mostert. So, guys, that is going to do it for today. If you want more information for tonight's NFL slate, tonight's NBA slate, check out the rest of the content on the YouTube channel. We've got NBA Live before lock, 6.30 to 7.30 p.m. Eastern time, and then NFL Live before lock right after that from 7.30 to 8.15 p.m. Eastern time. And then Heathen following up saying A-Chan is electric. He only needs a few touches. I don't buy that he's going to continue to average 12 to 13 yards per carry. So like, if we find that he's only going to be getting five touches, it's so unlikely to me that he'd have a big game. But he's proved me wrong before, but I wouldn't want to play him if he's only going to get five touches. We shall see, though. Guys, thank you very much for watching. One more time, if you have not done it, like the video. Subscribe to the YouTube channel, and good luck tonight.